Good morning. Welcome everyone to our adaptive service for the first Sunday of Christmas, December 27th, 2020. Uh, we are going to have a special service today in that uh, this service is not live. This is a pre-recorded service. Uh, and the sermon today will be given to you by our bishop of the synod, uh, Pedro Suarez. And so uh, we uh, will be pleased to share that with you. It'll be during the appropriate time in the service. Uh, but in the meantime, I want to give a special Merry Christmas shout out to uh, those who are uh, among those who are the regular participants when we have our adaptive service, when we're not in the pandemic. Uh, folks like Virginia and Chris and Tommy and uh, uh, Vicki and Sam and Rini and Joya uh, and uh, Deborah and uh, so many others. And so uh, we miss you still. Uh, I hope you had a joyous Christmas. Hope you all are staying well and we look forward to the time that hopefully soon we can gather together again in worship. But with no further ado, at this time, we begin with the greeting. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you are wonderfully create you wonderfully created the dignity of human nature and yet more wonderfully restored it. In your mercy, let us share the divine life of the one who came to share our humanity, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is taken from Paul's letter to the churches in Galatia. In the fourth chapter, Paul writes, But when the right time finally came, God sent his own Son, he came as the son of a human mother and lived under the Jewish law to redeem those who were under the law so that we might become God's children. To show that you are his children, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, the spirit who cries out, Father, my father, so then you are no longer a slave, but a child. And since you are his child, God will give you all that he has for his children. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke in the second chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When the time came for Joseph and Mary to perform the ceremony of purification, as the law of Moses commanded, so they took the child to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male is to be dedicated to the Lord. So they also went to offer a sacrifice of a pair of doves or two young pigeons, as required by the law of the Lord. At that time, there was a man named Simeon living in Jerusalem. He was a good, God-fearing man and was waiting for Israel to be saved. The Holy Spirit was with him and had assured him that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's promised Messiah. Led by the Spirit, Simeon went into the temple. When the parents brought the child Jesus into the temple to do for him what the law required, Simeon took the child in his arms and gave thanks to God. Now, Lord, you have kept your promise, and you, have, and you may let your servant go in peace. With my own eyes I have seen your salvation which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light to reveal your will to the Gentiles and bring glory to your people Israel. The child's father and mother were amazed at the things Simeon said about him. Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, This child is chosen by God for the destruction and the salvation of many in Israel. He will be a sign from God which many people will speak against and so reveal their secret thoughts and sorrow, like a sharp sword, will break your own heart. There was a very old prophet, a widow named Anna, daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She had been married for only seven years and was now 84 years old. She never left the temple. Day and night she worshipped God, fasting and praying. That very same hour she arrived and gave thanks to God and spoke about the child 
to all who were waiting for God to set Jerusalem free. When Joseph and Mary had finished doing all that was required by the law of the Lord, they returned to their hometown of Nazareth in Galilee. The child grew and became strong. He was full of wisdom, and God's blessings were upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. If you're following along in our bulletin, you will see our uh, gospel reflections uh, provided by our, uh, the gospel message provided by our publishing house, SundaysAndSeasons.com. Um, actually, Augsburg Fortress and through the resources, uh, resource, SundaysAndSeason.com. And uh, so you're in, uh, invited to, to take a look at that. Uh, but in the meantime, it is my honor to uh, turn this service over to Bishop Suarez and his sermon. O oh Christ, grace and peace are yours from the holy and triune God. Amen. This has been one of the most unique Christmas seasons we have ever had. Although in some other countries, restrictions on safety measures regarding the COVID-19 have been relaxed, it has not been completely so in the U.S., only in some parts. As a matter of fact, in many states, restrictions have been increased because of the growing number of cases. The families that used to get together in large numbers from different parts of the country were not able to do so this year due to social distancing. Folks that live alone did not have the chance to feel the company of others during this special time of the year. However, some families and friends decided to ignore the restrictions and get together anyway. Well, I wish them the best. We have some needs that go beyond the obvious. There is a tremendous psychological pressure because for many, it is in the collective experience that they feel a sense of belonging and of identity. Our traditions help us keep a sense of continuity and stability. That is one of the reasons we keep on sharing the story of God's love for us every year. This year particularly, when many of us have lived somewhat afraid, isolated, threatened in loneliness, even experiencing the loss of loved ones or the loss of securities in life, the sense of belonging becomes very important. The cheerfulness of others might even hurt them, remembering their happy times around these holidays. No doubt, that celebrating our traditions help our mental and emotional health. Therefore, we have seen so many different ways people have celebrated a, in a, at a smaller scale only to people or even connecting virtually. The creativity we have seen of people playing games and sharing jokes and stories by electronic devices is amazing. In our gospel today, we remember the hard times of the Holy Family, just Mother Mary, Joseph, and the baby Jesus. They lived one of the hardest moments of giving birth in a town that had no decent place for a baby to come to this earth. Nevertheless, they were connected to their faith traditions, their identity. With the reading today, we acknowledge the ritual of Jesus being circumcised on the eighth day as it was the Jewish custom. The readings, uh, or this reading, is from the presentation of our Lord, which we celebrate on February 2nd. That is 40 days after Jesus' birth following the Jewish tradition of the 40 days of purification of the mother. The fact that they were proceeding with the ritual 
of presentation meant that they fulfilled the previous ritual of circumcision at the eighth day. While many Americans get all their Christmas decorations down soon after Christmas Day or right after Epiphany on January 6th, others from other cultures leave their Christmas decorations until after February 2nd, perhaps following a more orthodox tradition. As this time of holiday is so weird and has the potential of hurting us emotionally, what can we learn from this family time with the Holy Family? Well, I see that, the, that they fulfilled their stewardship requirements for the ritual of presentation at the temple as part of their spiritual practice of their religious responsibilities. That's how they kept connected with their identity and their community of faith. As I was reading about this, I learned that the prices of those birds had increased drastically at that time to the point that they could have cost a month's salary. Imagine that. But as it is written in St. Matthew 6.21, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Perhaps they gave their offering gladly because they were happy and proud of being able to present their baby to the Lord. There we have a clue on working towards our spiritual and emotional well-being during this difficult time. To give. To contribute to God's work here on earth. In our community. Through our congregational ministries and beyond. The other finding I see in this story is the two faithful and prayerful persons that said something about the child. Yes, Simeon and Anna. These were people that prayed intentionally and willingly. These were not the quick prayers that we say like, oh, please, God, help me with my grades or Lord, provide us with money for this need or give, com give her comfort, Lord. Those are just wishing please, well wishing please. Being a person of prayer, like Simeon and Anna, is to live knowing the importance of that communication with God, enjoying the presence of the divine, and spending time contemplating the beauty of that spiritual presence. It is to live a life filled with the Holy Spirit, and in this case, implied waiting, a lot of waiting for the very special moment. We know about waiting. This year was full of expectations, waiting for COVID to go away, for a vaccine to be produced, for presidential electoral results to come, for our local churches to reopen, for physical pain to diminish, for a test result to come back, for no more losses in life, for our children to come to their senses, for our parents to live healthy longer, and the list goes on and on. Jesus himself, during his ministry, every time something very important was about to happen, he went away to spend quality time in prayer. Whether it was to select his disciples or to get ready to suffered torture and death, he spent deep, important, and contemplative time in the presence of God through prayer. One of those persons rooted in prayer in today's story is Simeon. We have gotten to know his proclamation as the Nunc Dimites that now dismiss me. The peak of his spiritual experience which he was waiting for so long, years and years, and now he was ready. He can die satisfied and in peace. The holy parents are celebrating the new life of their baby, and he celebrates the culmination of his life with joy. It is those key and important moments on life 
that draw us closer to God. We also will face sometimes our own nunkdimities. What a blessing if we can live satisfied and in peace as well. Simeon trusted, loved, and obeyed his Lord God. Anna, on the other hand, with her impressive pedigree, had lived what some might call a life alone. Although, I am not sure if lonely. After being married for seven years and losing her husband, she stayed alone for some many decades. Does one have to be miserable because one have no partner? Absolutely not. She got to be such a respected person as to gain the recognition of a prophet. We don't even have the actual words she spoke that day, but only that she was praising God and talking about the child. As we confront this weird time, I think we have two very good ways of dealing with lifting up our spirits during these different Christmas and New Year holidays. Giving and praying. Those are wonderful ways of praising God, thanking our Creator for sending us Jesus to live with us, to love us, to die for our freedom. My prayer is that this may become a way of life, not just for this pandemic time, but for always. May we act in that freedom so our actions will bring glory and honor to God. Amen. Thank you, Bishop Suarez, for your sermon. And uh, I hope and pray that everyone who heard it will be uplifted and inspired by your words. At this time, we are going to sing our hymn of the day, uh, the first two verses of the carol, What Child Is This? What child is this who lay to rest on Mary's lap of sleeping, whom angels greet with anthem sweet, equal shepherds watch our keeping. This, this is Christ the King, in whom shepherds guard and angels sing. Days, days to bring him long, but the babe, the son of Mary. Why lies he in such mean a state, where rocks and acts are beating? Good Christians fear for sinners here, the silent word is bleeding. Shall pierce him through the cross be born for me, for you. And the word made flesh, the babe, the son of Mary. Thank you, Jane. Now we continue with the prayers of intercession. Called into unity with one another in the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. Adopt us into your family, O God. Bless our elders with the peace and joy of Simeon and Anna. Strengthen those who have retired, those who work in older age, and those in need of income, food, company, or health care. Connect young and old across generations. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. The nations are upheld by your hand, O God. Cause righteousness and praise to spring forth, inspiring leaders to serve with compassion and integrity. Send your spirit of discernment upon legislators grappling with complex decisions for the sake of the common good. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Send the spirit of your Son into our hearts, O God. Come quickly to hearts that race with fear, hearts that break with grief, and hearts that long for wholeness, especially those on the prayer list of our congregation and those we name now with our lips or in our hearts. Reveal your power to heal and to save. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Offerings to the Mission and Ministry of Grace can be made through our website at gracelw.com. Look for the Donate button or by mailing a donation to our office at 1812 North Highland Avenue, Clearwater, Florida, 33755. And as always, we are so appreciative of all of your support. Now let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love. Through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray in the language closest to our hearts. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now we give thanks for the word. Let us pray. O God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need. Awaken us to the needs of others. And at the end, bring all the world to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory forever. Amen. And now receive the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. At this time, as usual, we will sing together the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Together we have heard God's word and joined in prayer. We have given and have been forgiven. Now our service of worship is, has ended and our service to the world begins. Go in peace. Share the gift of Jesus. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. All right, everyone, take care. Continue to stay safe. Uh, wear your masks and social distance and all of those things, uh, hand washing and all those things that help keep you and the people around you safe. Um, know that uh, you are cared for and you are loved. And uh, we pray that as soon as possible, we can resume our in-person worship. Uh, but in the meantime, let's be smart and be safe uh, and be compassionate and kind to each other. All right, take care.